five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Live from Harlem, New York. Hey, everybody, live from Harlem, in New York. It's the Alex Bennett Ramble, and we go until, you know, midnight. And here I am. How are you, everybody? Uh, what we're going to do tonight, um, I like doing this every now and then because our, uh, our, our friend um, Will Durst is under the weather, as it were. And uh, so we, we every now and then like to remember our discussions with him. So here we go. Back uh, about a year ago, I think, something like that. This is the second time we've tried this. And, and the first time we had a cat involved. Yeah. Sorry, we lost the cat. Yeah, but now we got you in sync. And that's but good. I'm in sync. You're in sync. That's a good thing. I think that is. Important. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Will Durst. And his cat was Eloise. Eloise was here, but she no, she's not going to make the cut. Now, what Sorry. are the names of your other cats? Just Madeline. Eloise and Madeline. Okay, named after basically heroines of books. Yes, uh, children's books. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, how are you doing, Will? Uh, shitty life sucks. The world hates me. I'm living in a cartoon. My car is messed up. But it's 13 years old, and I think uh, going on 14. So I, I think I got to get, yeah, yeah. It's about time. Is aren't are you the you you're kind of the Larry Bubbles Brown of cars? No, I think he still got his Fiero. <laughs> oh really? Fie yeah. A Fiero? I think I think didn't he have a Fiero? I think he had a Fiero. Yeah. Yeah, with a Dukakis bumper sticker on it. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, but uh, you don't even have a car. No, I haven't had a car in so long now. I wonder if I know how to drive anymore. Oh, you don't even rent? I've, I've, I've rented, but not recently. Uh, we used to go up to um, um, uh, Vermont, okay, once a year. Uh, and uh, I would rent a car yeah. and drive. But then as years have gone on, we start, we, we're flying now. You know, uh, it's a little more, it, well, it's, it's not. I'd like to say it's less exp it's more expensive flying, but it really isn't. Here's the reason why. If you go into Hertz and you rent a car, yeah, and you yeah. say, I want it for three days. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's going to cost you about, uh, oh, I think it was, what was the price that I saw about on it? Something like, something like $500. For three days. Maybe, maybe $600. Yeah. For three, for days. three days, yeah. But if I rent it for a week, it's only three hundred and twenty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I've got to rent it for a week. So now we got to figure out a. So we take the we fly. <laughs> what the hell? It's cheaper than renting a car for three and, days. And do you stay at a at a hotel? Or no, no. We have we have some house? friends of a very nice house there on the on on the lake on Lake I think Champlain it is. Yeah, and yeah. it's really right there nice. In Burlington. It's yeah. very nice. Burlington, yeah. It's well, yeah, uh, near Burlington. So you fly into Burlington. Fly into Burlington, yeah. Okay. yeah. So anyway, so I that so the last time I drove was about three years ago, maybe. And I just don't know if I know how to drive any longer. I, I you know, it, the idea of getting behind the wheel of a car feels strange to me now. Well, I know, once you get out of New York. Yeah, uh, driving is fairly easy, but you probably know your way around New York. You know the freeways. Yeah, uh, I've never been more discombobulated as trying to drive uh, fr into New York to where was I going? JFK, I think from from Woodstock. I was in Woodstock, yeah. and I had to uh, drive my car uh, to uh, JFK, and uh, the freeway signage was not very good. So I got very confused. I think I paid the same toll three times. Yeah, well, that 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 could very well be. Uh, <laughs> I uh, no, but I just I don't know. I mean, I, when I lived in California, I had a car, and uh, it, it was like I drove ever since I was like 
16 years old when you could kind of get a, a, a what do you call a learner's permit and I, I drove everywhere I mean I just you know I got out of the car and and then I got back into the car and if I had to go up to the uh, uh, the pharmacy it was three blocks away you got in the car right you know, so I mean, I drove everywhere, and I can't imagine that I don't know how to drive anymore. But I'm afraid of it. No, you you know how to drive. Yeah. You get in the the thing is the cars, uh, the technology is so different. I my car died, and I had an up to date car in nineteen no in in twenty oh seven twenty oh six yeah. yeah. And um, I'm renting a car right now, and all the bells and whistles are incredible. Yeah, yeah. In well, a good way. yeah. Well, yeah. But isn't it does, a creepy way doesn't too. it have a tendency, mind you, to to kind of what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, uh, kind of throw you off because of all this new technology in the car. You know, I mean, all of a sudden you got this big screen in front of you that's sending you information. You know, and you're distracted by that. I mean, I don't. I don't have the uh, overhead uh, projection part. No, I just have <laughs> the little screen on the right. Yeah. No, they have in deck uh, in the windshield. They have. Oh, really? Have oh, really? Yeah, they have, yeah, that they used to have in jets. They See, have that now. Is I don't it, know is it my mean. imagination? Let's say I rented a car three years ago and it had some new technology, but I knew I could figure it out pretty well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in three years, I think it's like immensely improved the technology, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, the audio technology. I, I I still remember when we were when we were under the thumb of the uh, radio guys. You know, where you had to listen what they listened to, and then the cassette came in, and then the cassette. You could determine what you were listening to, and now. I mean, no, uh, wait a minute. You could also then uh, then the CDs came in, and the eight tracks, and yeah, well, eight track, eight track cassette CDs. And the, and then uh, and then it was uh, uh, the streaming and uh, the satellite radio and and now you with with no effort whatsoever from your phone you can send to the radio so you get all your podcasts all your saved radio shows or or all your playlists you can send that to your car and it will play it out. And yeah. you won't run out down your battery because there's a charger right there. <laughs> it's it's incredible. Yo, I mean, I, I listened to Greg Proops the other day mm -hmm. uh, in a rental car off my phone because I have his podcast. So yeah, that's what that's what people are doing now. And I I did not know this because I did not have a car that came even close. Wow, because I uh, um yeah because what I used what I did uh, and have done is they always tried to rent me. Uh, a, uh, a GPS, right? You want a GPS with a car so you can take you where you want to go and so I didn't, don't need that anymore. Oh. It's in my phone. Yeah. You know, it's part of, uh, part of uh, I don't know, iPhone, the iPhone, I can't remember which app yeah. it is, but it's the map app. And yeah. you just say, yeah. I'm Wade, going here. Wade's and and uh, yeah. the Google Maps and Apple Maps, yeah. and they're and so, all pretty good. And so what Apple. I do is I plug that into the car that I'm listening to the music, on, my music on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, then as I'm going, she'll interrupt the music and say, turn left here, turn right there. In 30 miles, you're going to have an off-ramp, whatever. Yeah. So you don't need that. So what? That's why the rents on cars are so high because they can't sell you all that other shit. Yeah, my joke is it used to be only NASA had GPS units, and now I have two of them: one in my car and one in my pocket. Yeah, exactly. So you know it. it uh, and I remember I was one of the first people to get a GPS unit in my car. Do you remember? Do you oh, remember no, me when no. I had a GPS unit in the car? And I loved what I loved about it was when somebody would say, oh, "Okay, so we live over the hill, blah blah blah," and I I would say to them, uh, uh, "No thanks, don't tell me, just give me your address." And and they would say, "Well, why just my our address? I, I've got a GPS; it'll take me there." And then I just put in the address, and it would take me there. Uh, and I always love to brag about that. I love the GPS. I couldn't live without. And it was one of the it was one of the first ones. I think it cost like two thousand bucks to put it in the car. And now you don't even put one in the car if, if no. you don't have to buy one. You just 
Use no. your iPhone. You need a holder for your phone. Yeah, he, exactly, exactly. So anyway, uh, what do you think about uh, th things uh, political these days? Uh, anything? Uh, Pay attention. I don't care. Huh? Except for the State of the Union. State of the Union was. Uh, I thought he gave a pretty good speech. Yeah. Why? What was good about it? Tell me. Uh, it was rational. Uh, he wasn't, you know, eating fire, or uh, he wasn't. It wasn't blind revenge. It was, except what he said. Uh, no, <laughs> you you shouldn't have any partisan uh, investigations, or America will go to war. You know, except for that part. <laughs> and also, he he claimed he claimed responsibility for more women in the Congress than ever before, even though. Uh, out of 127 women in Congress, uh, 106 of them are Democrats. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he didn't even mention that. Yeah. Am I, would the Me Too people be mad at me if I said yes. that? Yes. Uh, stop right there. Yes. You know what I'm going to say? No, but it doesn't matter whenever you preface a statement with, uh, I, I don't mean to sound racist, but... No, I didn't say racist, the sexist. No, no, no. You yes. said the Me Too movement. Yeah, yeah. Me Too, what? sexist. So, yes, yes, they will be mad. What was it? I was going to say Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is hot. No, I don't think they'll, they'll be mad. Yeah, because every time they would take a picture of all the women in Congress, the new ones, yeah. she just lit up. She just, the, there was a, like an aura, there was a halo around her, you know? But what 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 about her her idea that uh, Israel shouldn't exist? No, that isn't that isn't Alexandria uh, yeah, yeah. Casio Cortez. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's the uh, no no no. Yeah, it's also Alexandria. Oh really? Oh. All, yeah. Well, she's a big fan of Palestine. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> so I don't care. Okay, no problem. Then. You know, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Not but, Judea. Hmm? You're not a big fan of Judea. I'm, I've never been a big fan of Israel. I, I think Israel is very warlike. I think that they never learned any lessons from being in concentration camps. You know, uh, I, 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 I don't know. I'm just bothered by it, you know. So what do you think about these Democrats coming out at the same time? Did you see Amy Klobuchar? Well, in the snow? yeah, but you know. Uh, Great visual, though. Uh, what? Great visual with the snow. Oh, oh, really? Yes, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was Minnesota. That was Amy Klobuchar. Yeah. Um, well, what do you think of some of these candidates? I mean, I think the Democrats haven't come up with anything interesting yet. You know what was interesting was last night, and I didn't get to see it because I had to go out to dinner with a, a friend from out of town, but uh, last night was the dueling... El Paso rally, yeah, yeah. with uh, Beto and Donald, and uh, that would have been interesting because well, Donald just made up these lies and said something about El Paso, and you know that was, you know, might have out of out of out of a story like this, he he might have picked like that part right there in this mm -hmm. part and put them together and made it that the whole story, and uh, so Beto, whose district. Uh, El Paso is who he was talking about. He held uh, an opposing rally, and I have no idea what happened. Yeah, I I saw that he had an opposing rally, and they didn't talk much about it. They mentioned it, which leads me to believe that he didn't get a big crowd. Ah, uh, which uh -huh. you know, but I don't know. I haven't. I I, yeah, yeah. I I at this point, folks, I have to go look at the news and find out for sure. But. Yeah, when they're not case, when they're not saying look at all back. look at all these people that showed up for this thing you know you got your New York Times there huh well well yeah but it's it's intact I haven't pulled the the paper apart yet what do you pull out first uh, front page New York Times I read the front page and then I read the editorial page yeah because in the San Francisco Chronicle on the Sunday paper everybody used to say it's like a grapefruit you take the pink out first. <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's driving me crazy you go into sync and then you go out of sync it's really th thank you very much uh, 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 Skype yeah um, 
But, uh, you know, so you felt that his State of the Union was cool or that he no, was no. better. No, no, I, I didn't say it was cool. I thought it was uh, rational. Yeah. It was rational. Yeah, there were a couple of uh, overstatements. There were, uh, he took credit for shit that he had nothing to do with and he made wildly optimistic predictions. But that's what the State of the Union is. That's what everybody does. Even Jimmy Carter did that. You know, so, uh, yeah, so that that was surprising. You know, there was no American carnage or, or any of that. But then he just lied throughout the entire thing. You know, but I, I just meant the tone was was much more civil than in past years. There's this show on Showtime called The, the Circus. Mm -hmm. And it deals with politics every week. And and this week they dealt with the State of the Union. And it opens up with an old grainy black and white of uh, of the uh, State of the Union with, I think, Truman. And then he's saying the State of the Union is good. you know. And then they go to uh, the next president, Eisenhower. The State of the Union is good. you know. And they go to the next president. The State of the Union is good wonderful or whatever and then they finally get to trump and he goes the state of the union is and then they go to shots of fighting arguing uh, kids in the uh, in concentration camps uh you know all these horrible things that have happened under trump and then they come back to him and he goes the state of the union is terrific <laughs> you know or whatever he said yeah um, yeah yeah they always Amazing. say they always say that no matter what's going on, they always say the State of the Union is good. Well, they're president, so they're kind of responsible. So they have to they have to reflect it as being good. Otherwise, well, people would say, "Well, what the hell are you doing about it?" You know, and why? Why? What do you mean it sucks? State of the Union sucks. Yeah. 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 yeah well, the president. yeah, but it, it but it, you know, I mean, I just felt that. Uh, Oh, I mean, you're right. He kind of maintained his place as the good boy the other night. He he was the kid who was told by his parents now, you know, don't make noise at the dinner table. He know? used his indoor voice. He used yeah. his indoor voice. But most of it wasn't taken up with things that, you know, most presidents are, are always, uh, uh, what are you, who are you waving at? Yeah, say hello. Uh, anyway. There she is. Hello. Uh, that's that's the funniest woman in America. There she is. According to Alex Bennett, Robin Williams. That, that's the lovely the lovely Deborah Durst. Hello. Hello, yes. Alex. Yes. And uh, how long have you two been married now? Thirty seven years. Six of the happiest years of my life. <laughs> Thirty-seven years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember at the punchline when uh, John Hutchinson held the? It wasn't. It for wasn't us? Hutch. It was. Uh, oh, Bob, uh, Bob. Bob Fisher. Bob Fisher. Bob Fisher. Held a benefit for you. What, what do you mean? Yeah. Well, we to just... send us off to Vegas. We were dirt poor, and uh, we decided to get married. So uh, we he held a benefit for us, and Stephen Pearl drew the poster and everybody performed for free and we got the money at the door and yeah. ran away to Vegas. Yeah. Wow. And that was 37 years ago? Yeah. yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. Quit reminding me how old I've gotten. I know. Ah. It's weird being able to throw numbers like that around. Oh, jeez <laughs> almighty. You know, I mean, well, I guess I've known you that long. Yes, yes. Yeah, you have. Good grief. And you don't look a day over 20. Oh, yeah. Shut up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I have to go to the bank now and yell at people. Uh, yeah, oh, oh yeah. okay. Is that well? That's what old people do. They go to the bank and yell at people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then they give you some free tea and cookies. And just go away. <laughs> <laughs> love you. Mm, I love you too, Deborah. <laughs> Take care. Bye bye. Right. Or, right. or as she's known in the business, Debbie. Debbie Durst. Yeah. Debbie Ann Piquel Durst. She's actually gotten more movie work than you, hasn't she? Yes. Yes. Yeah. She's. What, what are some of her credits? Uh, she was in uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. Voice. And she was in Monkey Bone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she was in Monkey Bone. What else? Beautiful Boy. Oh, she was in Beautiful Boy. Have you seen uh, the one with Steve Carell? Wait, I saw it, but where is she in there? She's just an extra on the street, on Hate Street, when he's looking for her. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I, I'll go looking for her. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, no, looking for his son. I'm sorry, looking yeah. for his son. No, but when well, I she, she was in another movie, and I can't remember. Yeah, getting back to what you know about his State of the Union. So he had he had his he had his indoor voice on, but uh, nevertheless, he spent most of it not saying what presidents normally do about. Here's what I'd like to accomplish in the next year. Here's what you know. I think we should be yeah, yeah. the direction we should be going. There was none of that. It was just either listing his own accomplishments or pointing out people in the audience who were like Holocaust survivors and, uh, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that poor kid, the cancer kid. Oh, man, she uh, being used as a prop by Trump, you know. Yeah. It's not bad enough to have cancer. And he, he didn't mention kids in the cages. He didn't mention a lot of shit. He, did, he didn't mention... Vladimir Putin. He didn't mention uh, uh, Maria uh, Butina. He didn't mention uh, uh, Paul Manafort. Or do you know Michael who one Cole. congressman and I can't remember who the congressman was brought to the State of the Union was a Guatemalan mother and her daughter who came into this country uh, and and uh, they w they went to the speech too. But he didn't point them out and say, "Here's some Guatemalan kids who came over the border seeking asylum." You know, no, it was Holocaust survivor, World War II vet, most of whom couldn't stand up, and the one who could stand up was saluting the president. You know, it was. Yeah. Uh, I find that part of it kind of pathetic. I, I, I feel like I'm watching a cheap version of the Ed Sullivan Show. I know. And in our fun. audience tonight, we have Shecky Shecky, you know. So uh, I don't like the idea of human props. Well, but uh, but they it, all use them, I know and that. they always use them at the State of the Union address. But at least with most State of the Union addresses, they don't talk about their accomplishments as much about where we're going and where they would like the country yeah. to go. And there was none of that from him. It was all about me, me, me. Here's what we've done. Employment, unemployment is the best it's ever been, which is a lie. Uh, you know, I mean, he a lot of lies in that speech. I think a lot that, of lies, and, and a lot of standing ovations. You know, uh, a lot of lines uh, where the Republicans would stand and the Democrats wouldn't. And, did you uh, like Nancy's clapping in his face though? With the yeah, what was, was that? that uh, Pat and Oswald called it the fuck you clap. Oh, really? Was that it? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> because uh, they're replaying that one a lot, you know. And uh, her relationship with Mike Pence. Mike Pence, and this is my line on stage, but Mike Pence is stiffer than Mitch McConnell wearing buttless chaps on a gay pride parade float. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Pence was just, just... Oh man, Pence is like a toady, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he's he's like a a toady wrapped up in a in a in a Bible, and he's always like two steps behind the president everywhere in everything. He's always in the shot. Never interrupts. No, he's, yeah, he's he's the scheming toady. Yeah, he's like he's like uh, Iago. You know. Do you think there's part of him that wishes Trump would die and he could become president? Or that he you would know, get. You know what would be ironic is if Trump got uh, taken down by the whole Stormy Daniels uh, thing, because then Mike Pence would become president because of a porn star, and the irony would melt him. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Oh son of a bitch! So what do you got coming up? Me? Yeah. Nothing. Nothing. Death. I think. And yeah, yeah, soon? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, soon. Uh, not soon. Not soon, hopefully. Yeah, but, yeah. but but that's, you know, Dip I mean, I always had something to look forward to. Hey, on Friday we're going to the movies, or on Saturday we're going to L.A. or something like that, you know. Yeah. And I was you always out LA? doing something, and now the only thing I have to look forward to is death. Well, see, that's why you, you set up uh, appointments that you go to the movies. Or you Have you seen any plays? Uh, we went and saw, uh, what was it? We saw something a couple of weeks ago. Uh, e e e Evan uh, Hansen. Oh, Dear Evan Hansen. Dear Evan Hansen, yeah. It, was, it, was, yeah, it okay. was good. Not my kind of show exactly, but I liked it. You it, know. Was, it was okay. Yeah, but it, you're, you're, the was, guy, you're the guy, kids. You, you're the guy who got the obstructed view seat of network. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you? No. Did you see that work? No, no, no. It's too expensive. You can't get it, and you can't get a ticket get, for it. Get the obstructed seat. I'm telling you. Call, really? Call up the box office. Well, what, 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 I, I can't remember. What was obstructing your view exactly? The stage. The stage. I was in the front row. The stage was right here. Really? Yeah. Some and so it. everybody was up there. So oh, okay. Your neck. That wow. was it. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, for eighty nine bucks. How much? Eighty nine bucks. As opposed to four hundred eighty nine, three rows over and three seats in. Yeah. So what's the weather like in San Francisco? Let's see out the window there. Let me let me just see. This is a daytime. Oh, oh, that's that's, that's a nice view. It's kind of uh, overcast, right? Yeah, it's about fifty three. It's yeah. gonna rain. Yeah. It rained, uh, rained and rained and rained, and tomorrow it's going to rain again. And then Friday I go to Mendocino mm -hmm. for the Mendocino Film Festival. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not the real festival. It's kind of a, uh, an adjunct. And then next week I go to Reno, and uh, next week I'm doing 142 Throckmorton, which is a great little theater that they've resuscitated in mill valley and so yeah just just working and uh yeah see see so you have something to look forward to yeah yeah so i will live vicariously through your future all right uh yeah <laughs> I'll, a, try to, I'll try to post more more shit on Ant's instagram <laughs> ladies and gentlemen there he is uh our old friend and comic supreme it's always fun will durst bye-bye will Thank you, buddy. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ah, uh, yeah, we love Will. I, um, you know, as you know, Will has n not been well. I don't know how to put it any nicer. Uh, and I'm in constant contact with uh, Debbie Durst, which is his lovely wife. And um, uh, he's, he's coming along. I can't say that it's by huge jumps, but you know, uh, it, it it he's he's slow he's he's getting better, okay by measures. I guess that's the best I can say. Um, uh, I I don't know if I'm allowed to say much more than that. You know, I mean he's he's it's gonna be a while, okay? It's gonna be a while. Those are some noises, by the way, that our our lovely uh, thing here makes. Our, um, you know, uh, 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 this, you know, Skype makes because I've turned it on, which means people can now call me, and I will uh, put them on the program, and hope that everything goes just fine. Okay. If you're wondering how my uh, how my how my test turned out, my uh, biopsy, well, I waited around the house all day long to hear from the doctor, and I didn't hear anything. Whoop! So apparently, apparently, probably uh, there are no results yet. Oh, hey, here comes uh, a guy. Gee, we've seen him now. This is the second time we've seen him in uh, how long? Uh, uh, let me see here. About a week, I guess it was last week that you called, and then you, and then you, and, and that's Sibby Itty. Wait a minute, let me, let me, uh, let me uh, do this. There we go. Uh, and then we lost you last week. You just because you work right, you're at work right now. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so somebody either caught you uh, talking to people on the job or <laughs> no, whatever. No, no, no. Um, I think, uh, I think I. I I lost connection because I was trying to uh, oh. use the Skype on my tablet. No, oh, I and, see. Okay, on, all right. Uh, on this one. Yeah. And for some reason, uh, you know, it was so fuzzy, mm -hmm. and I thought I had a connection issue. So now I have my laptop yeah. set up today, so I'm, I'm assuming it's better. Yeah, and you know Phil here, don't you? Yes, yes, I know Phil. Dr. Sibby, hey. how you doing? Right. Yes. Good, good. Uh, 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 Sibby, who used to be a, a a right winger, but now he's not. Now uh, I'm still, I think, uh, I'm still a conservative, but a John Kasich type of a conservative. Okay, I, I supported him, and I think he was a middle of the road, you know, not too extreme on either sides. Mm -hmm. 
with experience, you know, and he spoke well, you yeah, know, in all yeah, the debates. Yeah. He had made some good points, but, you know. Yeah, but, um, but he he, 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 you can't over. compete that's with like, a guy who insults other yeah. people, you know, yeah, I that's, guess. That's the problem. That's yeah, the that's, problem. Uh, uh, I was listening to news today. There's some interesting uh, information about Nunes that's coming out, which is I th- I found that very interesting. That uh, he had some uh, backdoor dealings with the the Parnas, you know, the the Russian or the Ukrainian guy, uh, Giuliani's friend. Oh, really? Yeah, and he was going um, trying to scheme a meeting with the guy to find some Russian uh, um, Ukrainian dirt on. Uh, well, these weren't. This was wasn't one of the two guys who got arrested here. Yes. Oh, yes, it is. Yes. Oh, okay. So Nunez was uh, yeah. thick, uh, thick with them, huh? Yes, and uh, I think his lawyer is saying that my client said that he talked to him and he wants to come and talk to the Congress. That's well, going to be. You just you just know that Nunez has got something bad going because he's such a. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I feel prick. sorry for these people. You know, they, I mean, conservatives, you know, they've just been railroaded. I don't know why. Mm. Lindsey Graham, you know, I, you know, I, I really feel that there's something going on with Lindsey Graham. I don't want to sound really bad, but after McCain was gone, he wanted a man in his life and he found Trump. <laughs> I think. Yeah, I, yeah I, 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 that's that's he an interesting. He wanted someone to bitch slap him every time, and he found Trump. Wow. Yeah, it's interesting. Yes, Phil. Uh, Vladimir, do you have the pictures of Graham with the uh, the nude pictures <laughs> of Lindsey Graham <laughs> playing with himself? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, when I see a guy like Nunez or who's that other guy, uh, the guy Jim never, Jordan. The, the, Jordan. Jordan, yeah, who never wears a jacket. I don't know why he, I guess he doesn't like to dress for the occasion. Uh, and uh, when I see guys like that, I just know that someday they're going to get something terrible on them. They're just too, you know. Uh, and uh, on Jordan, they've got some stuff where he was a coach and he let some yeah, things go by. Yeah, something with the kids. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah some, yeah. yeah. But, you know, the, the thing is, in a functioning democracy, you should have a good opposition. Yeah. On, uh, you know, the, my problem, you know, the thing is, what scares me is that if this is the norm that's going to be, and someday there's going to be a Democrat who's going to be a, you know, president. And yeah. What if they come with all the extreme ideas and stuff like that? You know. Well, is this you is have this a weakened opposition yeah. like the Republicans right now? My question, my question would be to you too, Phil. Is this the new normal? In other words, do we have to be insulting? Do we have to be gross? Do we have to be off-putting in order to to win? I think you I know. think in four years or five years, when uh, Trump has uh, uh, gone to greener patch, pastures, uh, that the attitude and the um, you know he's setting he's setting the um, He's setting the bar, or you he's know, creating the atmosphere. He's lowered the bar. Well, whatever you think, but he he is setting the atmosphere that uh, because he's punching back. The Republicans rarely punched back when attacked in previous. Uh, Phil, uh, I disagree. Years. I disagree with you about this. Yes, the, the, yes, the, I disagree. No, you, you I had I, I, uh, the I, I, McCain's no, wait, 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 and the, I, I, and, and uh, no, but uh, you know, uh, there are a lot of people who have punched back, but they don't punch. The bushes. They don't punch back with a closed fist. That's the difference. Okay, that is the difference. And so what's happening here is they've encountered somebody that's a street fighter, and uh, he has. No, he's not a, a street fighter. He's, he's, not, he's, he's a, a thug. He's not. If he's a street fighter, right? He would fight dictators. He's scared, and he you he gets you get that feeling that the man he looks for someone who is a dictator, and he tries to get cozying up to them, like yes. Kim. You know how many times this this fat bastard from North Korea <laughs> humiliate him? Be right? careful with the him. fat bastards. Sir. No, 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 no. <laughs> no the, the thing is. Last week he had, uh, you know, he ma- made a statement that I don't want to give any any more uh, meetings with Trump. I don't want him, him to take credit for this. We are not ready for anything. He is talking down to the American president, and Trump has nothing to say. Well, he's calling him rocket man anymore. Okay. He can't. I now uh, people like Kim, 
who even Obama said is probably one of the most dangerous people in the world yes. at the time. Uh, Vladimir Putin uh, and, and a number of these other uh, despots. Uh, and now, what, what Trump's style is, from what I can figure out, his negotiating style, is to first lash out and then try to become friends so you can negotiate. It's almost like, um, uh, what was that, Alex, that thing they had in the 70s uh, with Werner Erhard Est? Yes, you know, yeah. fir First he beats you down, and then uh, you know, he, he brings you up. The Marines do the same thing in their, in their training. Uh, I have a feeling this is Trump's negotiating yeah, but, but style. It, but it obviously you, you may not like no, it, but, but it, that's his it style. It obviously hasn't worked because now Kim is just basically telling him to eat shit. Is what well, he's doing, but it's he's given Kim some rope. Maybe Kim is going to hang himself now. He Kim will never fall in line as long as China is supporting him, and China but will China. never stop supporting him because North Korea is a market for Chinese. Right. Oh, there are only there are only uh, what there are only three communist countries left in the world, and yeah. and uh, North and Korea you want a is fourth one of them. called America. No, I don't uh, want to force. I don't think America. uh, Americans would ever, uh, you know, embrace a co communist ideology or their way of you life. Know, yes, I, I'm a socialist, that's, but that's not yeah. a communist, Phil. Let's yeah. be very honest about it. You know, one, one, one tick away. No, no, no not one tick away. It's a big difference. Big difference because uh, socialism is a is a. Um, uh, it, it, it is it is really a form of uh, how we handle money and how we appropriate money and so on. Where communism is an institutionalized thing in which the people are under its thumb, and it is uh, yeah. it's a it's a totalitarian way of, of yeah. doing things. So I, I don't I, I would like to bring out uh, not this is not a change of subject, but what what's happening. Uh, uh, with Iran right now, and that uh, Trump has been putting maximum pressure on Iran with sanctions. And uh, it seems to be working because Iran doesn't have any money, and they're, f and they're funding uh, Hezbollah and a number of other uh, proxy wars uh, uh, in, well, in their region. Well, I guess I'll have to say, Hezbollah, you're on your own. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. So anyway... Uh, what's happening is, is the people are taking to the streets. Uh, they're uh, protesting. I guess there was a big gas uh, increase from the subsidized gas mm -hmm. that the government had. Yeah. And the people are in the streets and they're marching with American flags, similar to what's going on in Hong Kong. And there's going to be a test for Trump with Hong Kong and China. But we'll get to that in a second. Yeah. But uh, what's happening in Iran is that uh, they're saying the people are saying they're uprising and, and they're saying, look, you know, you've got money to fund uh, this action, this stuff against Israel, this stuff in Lebanon and Qatar. You know, what about what about us? And uh, if the Iranian people had, you know, 45, 50 years ago, we had a very good relationship with them. And and and, you know, they, they were nice people. Uh, it's it's the government there. And what Trump is doing uh, with his maximum pressure going after Iran, you, you, you look at Kim and, and so forth, well, maybe he's just waving him away at the moment, but what he's doing is working in Iran. He, he is being, uh, uh, the Congress is trying to undermine what he's doing with China, mm -hmm. getting back to, to the China thing. Because of the sanctions, China's economy has been affected. Now, Alex will say, no, it hasn't. But no, no, Phil, and I'm going to tell you why it hasn't. I'm going to tell you why it hasn't. Because, they because, their, no, because you refuse to understand that, okay, so we're not doing business with them, or we're doing tariffs, or we're doing this or that. They've got the rest of the fucking world. I mean, the economy of India oh. is larger than this the economy is, of the United States what, when it comes right. to doing business. But India makes stuff and sells no, it. No, in but other India countries. also does a lot of business with China. China does. China's doing China business. Buys raw China's materials. attitude is this. You don't want to do business with us? Fine. We've got the rest of the world to do business. And who want That's to do not, business with us? 
You, you're living. Working. You're living with the, the 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 Trump myth that the Chinese are in trouble because of what he's been doing. And you okay, know what? So are you they're not Maria, as in, they are not in as much trouble as we are from what he's been. Are doing. Are you calling Maria Bartolomo a liar? Yes. All right. Uh, so anyway, what's happening is is they're coming up with a House bill. I don't remember which number it is, but to uh, ask Trump to condemn China and what. The uh, uh, on the protests in Hong Kong. Yeah. Now that's not going to help his negotiations. Of course, you know the American people condemn China for what they're doing in in Hong Kong, but uh, it, it's almost like they're they're trying to sabotage these. Uh, the, uh, the Dems are trying to sabotage his negotiations with the Chinese. Uh, by doing that, no, I don't think they are. The I think, Chinese I think, need to I, I think what they're things. saying is there, there is, there are people. You know, we have always, as a country, come to the defense of people who are being put upon by their governments. We've done that continually, and we pride ourselves in that, Phil. And what you're asking us is to stop doing that. I'm saying that the timing isn't great. No, the timing isn't great, but. You know, I mean, if he thinks he's doing business with China, he's not doing business with China. Well, okay, he aren't to you begin tired? with. To begin with, he is one of the worst businessmen in America. You know, everything he puts his finger on turns to shit. The Midas touch in reverse. Yeah, but uh, well, I'm glad you admit it. Fi finally, addressing. He may be bad, you know, with casinos, but isn't he finally addressing the 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 uh, the, the uh, the um, intellectual property issues, the uh, not that's that what, much, that's not what's that, hanging up not, here. Is not, China doesn't, and not that much, they're not, they're not yeah. playing fair. No, and 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 this isn't, they just go, they'll go, okay, so you don't want to do business with that's us? what you think. Wait a minute, Sibby, what do you think? J jump in here, and by the way, where's everybody else tonight? Here we are, we're 20 Friday minutes night, into they're praying. I, mean, I think I, it was a bad decision for American uh, companies to take our design and technology and move it over there to just for the sake of getting it manufactured cheaper and then bring it over here. Mm -hmm. It was a bad move. They have the plans, they have the technique, they have the design, they have the protocol blueprint for everything that, you know, that needs to be manufactured. If tomorrow they say, okay, you pick up your bag and you go 24 hours to leave Chinese shore and, you know, Americans will have to leave. Well, you know, they did that. Wait, it, this has happened before, if you remember correctly. Hold on a second. This has happened before. You remember Japan, yeah, where they took all our ideas and yeah. then they 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 what, what what's the word they go and do when they take a technology they, uh, reverse uh, engineered reverse engineered, reverse it, engineered yeah. it and came up with better stuff. I mean, we had color TV, so they changed the way they made color TV so they wouldn't infringe on patents and yeah. bettered us at our own game. They came out with the Sony Trinitron, which was a yeah. much better looking television set yeah. than the RCA three dot system. Yeah. Okay. So uh you know, this has gone on constantly and and uh Reverse and, 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 and by the way, by the way, we've stolen from other people too. Doesn't make it right. Reverse engineering is not as big a crime as what the Chinese did. The uh, idea during, of reverse engineering, Phil, Phil, the idea of reverse engineering is to take something and steal it and, and steal it, but steal it in a way that you're not infringing on patents. That's do, all. Do, but do the, do the Japanese respect our patents today? I believe they do. I think they respect the rule of law. The Chinese well, do actually, not. Actually, we probably respect now, their patents because they probably friend, got more than we George, do. My friend George, his dad spent five years in a Chinese prison camp. Mm -hmm. He was an American uh, in the late 30s, and he was mm -hmm. buying uh, uh, fabrics in China. Mm -hmm. And uh, he wound up, uh, you know, at, at, there was some sort of overthrow. Uh, I don't remember the exact year. But he spent five years in a prison camp. Uh, because uh, he was an American, and uh, and uh, you know, I I can tell you this: they they if you set up companies there, it's almost like in Russia where they set up companies, and then the government just comes in and says they're ours now. Thank yes. you very much. They can and do that. by the way, we, don't even. I'll, I'll tell you where I'll tell you where China I'll tell you where China has an advantage over us, and it's not a good advantage. Okay, it's not an advantage we would want here. But for instance, I, I always use an example. 
Uh, they said at one point, within the next five years, every community in China is going to have Wi-Fi, going to have free Wi-Fi. And all they have to do is just wave their hand and it shall be done. There's nobody in, in there, in their, in yeah. whatever they call their parliament or whatever that thing is they have. Yeah, they don't have to pass They don't have to go through all yeah. this legislation yeah. and all that. They just wave their hand and say, it shall be done. They did the same thing with the fast trains. Yep. They just went, you know, in five years, we're going to have a high-speed train going to, sh to Shanghai. And within five years, there was a train going to Shanghai. And all the, the only person that had to make that decision was the leader of the country just waved his hand. Now, we, we don't that have that kind of country. But on the other hand, we can't compete with that kind of thing either. Well, and we certainly can't compete if they keep stealing our technology. Phil, they don't... And, and they do it in a way where they leverage it. They, they get... We get 49% of the company. They get 51%. Phil, and Phil, they say Phil, if they don't Phil, give us Phil, the Phil, secrets, Phil, can't Phil, operate Phil, here. Phil, if they're stealing from us, it's because we're giving it to them. I mean, if if we don't want them to steal our, our iPhones and so on. Wait a minute. Let me finish. Don't want them to steal our iPhones or our uh, phone technology. Then don't have them made over there. Yes. Okay. Yep. I mean, yep. of course they're going to steal it. They've got all everything they need in order to build their own. They have the yeah. blueprint sitting right on the table. Yeah. Why would yeah. they have to? You know, they just have to just look it, at it, it and it, make We the gave replica. it to them. They didn't go steal it somewhere. Yeah. Well, we gave it to them because we had greedy businesses that were allowed to, to go there and do that. And they're still you doing know? it. They're still doing and, it. I and mean, there was no incentive for them to stay in the states. Trump is giving them the incentives through tax breaks, uh, allowing them to bring their money back into the country, uh, and uh, and putting tariffs on on these products so that it's not a benefit to them to continue to operate in that sphere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Is anybody else going to call? Is this is this it? I can't well, believe you, it. You, uh, we only you only have. We had an American a, patriot on the uh, on on the uh, thing, and it's only you, Alex. Yeah, what answering? What what <laughs> happened? But look at how many people are watching. Yeah, uh, the, the, uh, thirty-seven. That's uh, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah. thirty-seven people oh, watching. Well, right here now. comes Vernon Nunn. Okay, so he can he can do the rest of the show in Morse code. Okay, <laughs> um, he you know um, uh, let me see here. Um, um, let me let me. Let me there we go. There's Vernon Nunn, ladies and gentlemen. Do that again, and I'll, I'll do something that I grew up with. Just just pl start going with your thing. Hello, Mr. and Mrs. America and all the ships at sea. Let's go to press. Who was that? Um, the uh, Who the was modulation. What? Oh, uh, uh, yeah, that was uh, Walter Winchell. Walter Winchell. That's correct. Uh, the modulation of Vernon's uh, Morse code mm -hmm. overcame your uh, voice. Oh, did it really? Uh, so, oh. Yeah, it didn't. It didn't. Melt. Well, no, to you, but not here on the air. Oh, oh okay. not here on the air. It's just fine. Hold on a second. First, let me let me see here. Who am I putting up here? Oh, here's Patrick uh, Blazik. I think Tony for Queens here. Okay, wait a minute. Tony's here. Okay, hold on a second. Hey, I got. I got to put. Looks Tony. like Tony's falling asleep. Oh. Looks like Tony froze. I, 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 I got to put Tony it. in uh, Webhead. There he is. Okay, Webhead. Uh, are you there, Webhead? Hold on a second. Let me I don't turn think this so. on. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. There, there we go. Wait a minute. I'm sp trying to get um, uh, Tony in here. Okay, uh, wait a minute. Tony's Hold gone. On. Tony. Tony's gone. No, there's yes. Tony. Oh, he's back now. No. Oh, I'm back. I got disconnected. Uh, all I care about is what I've got here, Phil. You know. Yeah. Uh, what's going out? I can't. I don't care what you see or don't see. Uh, let me see here, Darth Pat. There we Are go. Are you saying you don't give a shit? I don't <laughs> give a shit. I don't give a shit. There That's we the story go. Of my life. <laughs> there we Vernon's go. got his hand. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Oh, I'm still trying to get Darth Pat in here. Hold on a second. Oh. That's just simply because I didn't. Uh, there we go. I'll do that. And there he is. Okay. Hello, Patrick. Yes. Uh, 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 Vernon has his hand up. I want to do my impersonation of Trump negotiating with China. You will do it my way, or I will hold my breath. Yeah. 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 A great negotiator. He, you know. He, he's, he's, really he got, he's gotten everybody over the years so snockered by the fact that he's supposedly a good businessman. Well, you want a good businessman? 
Uh, Bloomberg's running for president. He's a much you better know, businessman than Trump ever was. You know, Steyer's that's a much better businessman than even either one of them. And by the way, he started uh, out with nothing. Yes, Patrick. I think on this panel we have the better businessman in Tony. <laughs> and, uh, Tony comic book worth thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And what are we all doing? Jerking off. <laughs> yeah, basically, basically. Yeah. Tony, you are paying income tax on your income from the comic book sales, right? You want to laugh now when eBay, when I make a sale, eBay puts the taxes in there. Yeah. Bill, the the oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah the, I, see it. I just sold the book for a couple hundred and they go, oh, there's the tax. And, and they take the money. I, my, I, have my, I keep it separate, though. My, uh, guy well, but that's, that's good. Yeah, that's good they do that. Okay. You know. Yeah, they should. Actually, they really should. You know, you go on a game show and you win yeah. some money. There is a guy from the IRS off stage. But it's a real loser because let's it, say you win a, it, a oh, spa. Like let's say you, you, win a, you win a spa and the spa is valued at $5,000. You got to pay $2,500 in tax for a spa you don't want. <laughs> and and you couldn't sell for twenty five hundred dollars if it was the last thing in the in the universe. Oh, where did I hear that Where's happening? With some can you sell the prices for cash? Like, say, if I don't want to go to the Caribbean or something. Uh, you do, well, can. yes, you know. can. No, yes, you can. Here's what happens backstage. They know. also tell you if you don't want the spa, I, we'll give you so much money for it. And uh, then hey, you pay the remember taxes. Remember on the golf couple, he took the tuna fish. <laughs> because you know, I I watch like the Price is Right, and I see oh, the, I, the I see old shows. I, I, I see the showcase. I see the showcase, and I said, "Who wants any of that shit?" You know, yeah, I, don't, I want the money. I said, yeah, "Give like, me the money." <laughs> you know, I want a trip to Bahrain. You know, I'm really I, looking I forward to that. I want to leave the United that. States, Alex. I don't want to go there. I'm afraid I won't come back. <laughs> you know, but I mean, uh, they're, 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 but the tax people are there waiting to get their money. You know, mm. and and good for them. You know, uh, uh, Sam's well, back to the Trump thing. Did you see what happened today with the vaping? Uh, Mitt Romney sitting next to Trump. Oh. They didn't hit each other, and uh, it was an interesting uh, dialogue between manufacturers, retailers, and and so forth. And and Trump just said, "Okay, bring in the cameras. Let's talk about this." I thought it was very interesting. Yeah. He initially wanted to ban it, but then uh, someone told him that you're going to lose a lot of votes, and he said, "No, I, I don't want to. I don't want to lose my votes, so I won't ban it." Did he say? Did they say that? Yeah, mm -hmm. it, like three days yeah. ago, it came and it, uh, one day, one party, day you know, he, you're going to lose a lot of votes because there are a lot of your, uh, you know, people who support him. They are in the working in the vaping industry, or they, you know, they you know, vape. Well, in one of his uh, the helicopters waiting for me press conferences. Mm. Uh, he said, I'm, I'm going to sign something. I'm going to do away with vaping. Vaping's terrible. It's killing people, blah, blah, yeah. blah. A couple of days later, well, I kind of changed my mind. Yeah, because this. of the votes. You know, he said he's going to lose some votes. But that's, that's pretty, uh, well, you know. I, well, that's, uh, wait, 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 Patrick, Patrick, Patrick has That's what his, we want, a man of conviction. <laughs> well, I'm not so sure that he's not. Patrick, uh, you know. Patrick, you, you had your hand up. He blows with the wind. Wait a minute. Let Pat Patrick talk here. Yes, Patrick. The vaping thing I explained the other night that it was a Congress or a senator from Wisconsin who was railing against the uh, banning of it, and he was the one who had the president's ear at the end. And it's like I've, I mean, a number of us have said whoever the last person is to speak to the president is mm -hmm. the one who tends to be. The one that influenced him. Yeah. And so does that mean that he talks to Putin every night before he goes to bed? <laughs> that Putin has the pictures. Yeah, he, I the years and he I has the pee pee pictures. Do you think uh, that happened? He did, wasn't he peed on Obama's bed? It was that. Was that a wish? Well, no. Oh, it, they it, say it, that? I, they, it. they, I think he, it's either he liked to get peed on or he liked to pee on the prostitutes in Russia. I don't think I it's I thought it was somebody. Oh, no, really it was like Danny to Thomas that liked the pee well, on the No, he liked, no, he liked, uh, he, yeah. had, he had a slightly better uh, uh, predilection. Predilection. His, his was really terrific. Uh, Danny Thomas supposedly, as rumor would have it, uh, loved to uh, he had a, uh, have a glass coffee table, okay? And uh, hello, by the way, to Kevin. 
uh, a glass coffee table, and then he would like to lie under it and then have hookers come on, over and shit on top of the coffee table. <laughs> That's that, nothing uh, compared to the guy, you know, the, the, and, the John McAfee. Have you seen oh, his McAfee, movie? McAfee, McAfee, yeah. yeah. Oh, the, he, the one who was living in uh, Belize? Yeah. yeah. McAfee, the... Uh, Let me yeah. tell you, he didn't have a oh. glass table. <laughs> That's all I can say. Oh, he just liked them to shit on him. He, oh, didn't, yes. he didn't need the... Uh, uh, those, yeah. uh, you know, those things, um, uh, you know, yeah. what's it called? Where you, you lay on it, it's like a... You tie... I'm, I'm trying to find the a right... Hammock. Or a hammock? Yeah, a hammock. He yeah. had these women lay on the hammock and had a hole in it. And uh, straight underneath, he oh, would just leave it. Okay, all right. Well, you know, every everybody do his own way of That's getting. That's a pretty shitty oh. experience. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Um, that really stinks. But um, <laughs> you know, this is the the rumor is there are there are videos of uh, or pictures of of this peeing incident, whatever way he liked to do it with Trump. You know. Uh, yeah, uh, I think uh, I can see shift oh, one of the five. He's a strange character. What? What were you saying, Tony? What? What did you he's, say? He, you know, he's a strange character, Trump. And I want, but you would think they would. I, I don't know. I could see him doing something crazy like that. But you would think it would get out, though. I mm -hmm. wish it would get out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, other than Danny K, he died at. 76, he died young. Danny I, Thomas, Danny Thomas. Oh, I Danny was on Danny K. I thought Danny K yeah, was his Alex shit. killed oh, Danny K. What? I was going to tell my mother about what do you mean? Danny Alex K. Alex killed him. What do you mean I killed Danny K? What you, 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 you dragged him out of the studio and he died. What do you mean I dragged him out of the studio? Danny K? No. Murray the K. Murray the K. Murray the K. Jesus, That's Phil. <laughs> no, all the Murray. K's. All the K's. They're all K's. There's a little difference between the guy who played Hans Christian Anderson and the guy who the used K. to, you Perfect. know. Hold. He was the founder of St. Jude's Children Research. Maybe more they give money to that. Yeah, that's a, that was Danny Thomas's uh, research place. And, and Checky and I, when we... Came, you when I came, Jackie told me when he, I you, came, you went. Did you go to his house or that was the other one? Did did he take a tour of that? No, we, 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 we drove back from California because I was, yeah, getting, was, I was coming to work in New yeah, York. Okay. And uh, we stopped at various places. And one of them was the St. Jude's Hospital because that's where Danny Thomas is yeah. buried. You know. And uh, we were standing there in the Danny Thomas uh, Museum. Asking oh. where the glass coffee table was. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, did Danny Thomas's daughter Make have her nose fixed? I don't know, Phil. Well, she doesn't have a Danny Thomas nose. Where was he born? Well, yeah, he was, uh, he was what, Lebanese? I think. Yeah, he, yeah. I think so. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm looking at his Hey, listen, I got to tell you something. This ain't, you know, no matter what you want to say, can you Mar Marlo. as many people I I had a friend of mine, um Karen yeah. um uh, Babbitt, whose father was Art Babbitt, who was a Disney cartoonist. It's on uh, Rain Man. No, he was he was one of the biggest he, he he was one of the main he was one of the old Charlie men Babbitt. of Disney. Uh, um uh, Art Babbitt. Um but he was also led the strike against Disney too. With the animator strike, um, but anyway, Karen was a comedian, very fine comedian and a writer, and she got a job writing on the last show that Danny Thomas ever did, in uh, uh, which he played a doctor or something like that. It was a sitcom, and um, was Uncle Tanus on that show? No. Can I finish the story, Phil? Yeah, well, yeah, just giving you a little bit of flavor. No, 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 nobody knows who Uncle Tanus is here. Does anybody know? Who, did anybody get that no. reference? No, nobody. No, does. come on, Uncle Tanus was Danny Thomas. Was it? Yeah, on the show. Uh, yeah, make room yeah. for Daddy. They all remember the Danny Thomas show. You remember it, don't you? Uh, 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 um, um, I do, uh, Tony. Don't you, Kevin? I yeah. don't. Oh, all remember the Danny What's Thomas that? show. And anyway. they remember watching the reruns. Yes. Anyway, the point. Can I get to the finish of the story right, here? Right. So she time. she she was working for Danny Thomas and as a writer, and uh, Danny Thomas wanted to see her, so she, she went into his office and she had to sit there because he hadn't come into the room yet. He was out around the studio, and so she was just sitting there on the couch, and in front of her is a glass coffee table, oh. <laughs> and she somehow this just she couldn't 
she couldn't get along with it. <laughs> it just really bothered her. <laughs> and she kept staring at she told That's me. That's a definite indictment. There's a lot of people that have glass coffee tables in their offices, you yeah, know? <laughs> yes. But in his particular case, she remembered the rumors and, well, the rest is history. Hello, uh, Jeff. How are you this evening? I think it sounds fine. Y yeah. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. You got it all fine? You didn't get the audio going wrong or anything like that? That's he even turned off his, his neighbor's computer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does the garage door go up? Not anymore. <laughs> not, 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 not like it used to. Um, anyway, so about, anyway, so enough about the rumors. But, but he did start this hospital, and the hospital is a wonderful hospital in which nobody ever pays for their child. To be that's the Shriners that uh, support that, right? No, yeah, that damn commercial no, comes no. on. I just want to write checks every time it comes on. Yeah, no, but I mean they're they're a worthy cause. They're not, you know, not a bogus cause. They're, you know what commercial I hate? Cars for kids. Well, oh, everybody yeah. hates right. that one. <laughs> then you sing it for the rest and of you the day. Realize, I was watching that ad the other day. That ad has to have been running for the last ten years, and I'm thinking, how old are those kids now? <laughs> That's probably like they're old enough to and drive. I, if I had a TV show, I would like to go out and find out who those kids were, and then just have them come on as they are today. <laughs> Cars and, for old and farts. do and do the song, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think you know, I I sold some vinyl to the guy, the local cards Cars for Kids guy, and I think what happens is a little bit of that money goes to some charity, and the rest of it is administrative stuff. All this. To, Oh, that's yeah. Well, that's, you know, this, this, this is what I did years ago. I, um, I, I got tired of doing these. You know, I, when people would ask me to do benefits, I would do it. They would do a telethon. they say, Alex, would you come on the telethon? And I'd go on the telethon. And then after a while, I started to check into some of these charities to see how money. much yeah. of their money went to the charity and to the good can you work. Ask, like, hey, listen. Boy, let, let me, fin let me finish, Tony. Let me finish what I'm yeah. saying. Uh, how much of that money was going to good works and how much of that money was going to administration? And when I suddenly found out that, for instance, cerebral palsy, something like only 40% was getting back to the charity, I stopped doing cerebral palsy telethons. That's not enough. Uh I also stopped doing cerebral palsy telethon when I went to it one year and they gave us a little pep talk before we went on. And they said, by the way, we don't call our people handicapped. We call them handicapable. Didn't they tell you to limp when you went out on no. the stage? And <laughs> I went and I went crazy because i said i've never heard anything That's disrespectful right? it's not disrespectful it's it's what, what's the word i'm looking for uh patrick uh uh, uh condescending okay yeah i can see that it was just condescending yeah. oh look at look at uh, patrick here right. he's not handy like he's, hand they would he's handy he's handy capable he's yes good. patrick well i you just reminded me of something now, i may have mentioned this on the show years ago, but when I was in re uh, therapy and I was still at the hospital uh, during my six-week uh, vacation there, yeah. uh, we used to, I had therapy two or three times a day, mm -hmm. and all of the cripples on the floor that were like me and worse and some you know, a little bit better than me. Um, and one of the guys was a tetraplegic, which is he could only blink his eyes. Mm -hmm. He couldn't move his arm. You know, a quad can still move their arms and that. Yeah. Uh, and they had him sitting in his chair, and they were throwing a ball at him. And then when it would bounce off his chest, they would say, good try. <laughs> I <thought>. oh, <laughs> moving, nothing mo and I remember sitting there doing my therapy thinking this kid probably wants to take a gun and kill himself <laughs> and, and, and everything going on upstairs, she said yeah he responds by blinking and then there was another therapy that 
they put an arm in a sling and they would move it for him and, and they would say, wow, that was a really good one. And <laughs> oh, God. I felt so bad for this fucking kid and he was only 17 and that was 16 years ago. Now, he's in his mid-30s and he probably still, well, by now I'm sure he lost his mind. Because if you can't communicate and people are doing shit like that to you, yeah, it, so it's the same thing in the handy capable. I mean, they're praising him for having. They were, a ball ju- they were just up. one short. They were just one step short of sticking their fist, their hand up his ass, and using him as a hand puppet. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, you know, I mean, that was me, terrible. It, yeah. That was one of the worst things I'd ever witnessed. Well, anyway, anyway, getting getting back to this whole thing about money that you know was being spent. So I started investigating all these various charities so that I wouldn't get suckered again. And and uh, the one that I found, which one do you think I found? The most money went back to the cause. The Jerry Lewis one. You're absolutely you're absolutely right, Tony. The remember, he did, my mother used to always cry when he used to sing at the end. I always, I always watched it. Well, he, he, he seemed like it was like genuine. Did, I felt bad did, for those. Did kids she too. cry the year he sang it for me? Uh, I, she might. We used to watch it every year. Yeah, so. but anyway, he he. I, for whatever I want to say about Jerry. Uh, in fact, I said this on the air once. Was he that bad? Huh? Wait, he was wait, bad. No, hold on. Let me tell the story, Tony. Uh, okay. well, uh, I I told said this on the air exactly what I'm saying to you is that. Well, I don't know. I don't think that much of Jerry Lewis as a uh, as a performer, but I got to admit that he has really done a great thing with muscular dystrophy because. And I talked about the fact that a great amount of money went to the the cause itself, and the station had to send him a letter because they had been like put on notice by the government that any time anybody on the station said something bad about somebody, you had to send them a notification telling them they had the fair. right they had the right to equal re- response, right? What do they call that? Fair yeah. what? Was it? Uh, fair comment or whatever. It, yeah. it, it doesn't exist anymore. Anyway, so they sent him a letter saying, our host, Mr. Bennett, said blah, blah, blah. Now it's the night of the... La- uh, of, of the... Uh, of the uh, telethon and it's the end of the telethon and jerry is sitting on his stool and he goes and now i'm gonna sing a, you never walk i'm gonna sing our song blah 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 blah. and uh i'm i'm dedicating this to that disc jockey i hope i'm good enough oh wow jerry guy and <laughs> and, and and uh everybody in the room who knew what i had said about him stares at me and goes, <laughs> and he's saying, you never walk alone. And I'm going, Jerry is singing, you'll never walk alone to me. Shall I go around the room like a gimp or something? What should I do here? <laughs> yeah. but That's fine. I, I just, I have to say that what he did for that charity was unmatched by almost anybody. Except maybe Danny Thomas, who look what Danny Thomas created. And they, fired, and they fired Jerry. They fired him eventually. Yeah. Well, you know, it was going to happen eventually, right? They, 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 they. You know, he 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 had gone past his prime, as it were. But anyway, um, and, and you know, there, there was a time that all of you guys, all the all the uh, uh, what would you call them uh, performers, mm-hmm. would uh, would have a charity. And, uh, you know, you had to pick your charity carefully. Well, I, I had one. Yeah, what was that? My, me. Oh, well, <laughs> what, what was George Jetzel's uh, George, George Jetzel, Jetzel's, I, I don't uh, know. Charity. I don't think he had a charity. Yeah, old people. No, he just, he, you know, <laughs> there was a talentless piece of shit. That guy. <laughs> Terrible. But they were, if they don't know Uncle Tanoose, they're not going to know George they're not Jetzel. Gonna know. How many here? Do you know George Jessel, Patrick? <laughs> No. no. Yeah. Do you know George Jessel, Kevin? Doesn't ring a bell. Uh, uh, do you know Do you know Quasimodo? Yeah. Yeah, because he rang a bell. Yeah. 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 Okay. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but anyway, so I mean, it, 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 I just I I I, I uh, many times I would be asked by a, a company to you know an organization to be on a telethon or whatever, and I'd say, well, let me get back to you. I've got to check on you. 
and I would go and check. And if I saw that, you know, under 50% of the money, or maybe under uh, under 70% of the money, uh, went to uh, didn't go to the uh, the thing itself, I just you know that was it. They they say that if it's less than 33% or less in administrative costs. They uh, are saying that that uh, the watchdog agencies are saying that that's okay. Uh, do you know? And, do you know uh, what it was for uh, muscular? St. Jude is twenty-seven percent. Do you know what muscular dystrophy was? Uh, it was probably eight or nine. Yeah, something like that. About eight or nine percent. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was really good that way, you know. And once Jerry left, that was it. And, you yeah. Know, they they who they? But he didn't leave. He sent them out on a on a you know. On a rail. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, um, oh, by the way, I guess I wanted to read. You might, you might get a kick out of this. Marjorie sent this to me. I don't know where she got it. This is a new Medicare plan. I don't know if you've heard about this because it's time of year now, where if you have Open. Medicare, you get to sign up for it. Are you signing up for it yet, uh, uh, Pat, uh, Phil? How old are you? I, yeah, I signed up last year, but I'm getting phone calls now from every Medicare provider uh, and his uh, brother. Uh, you mean this part for the for the for the twenty percent that yeah. they don't they don't take? Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, this is Medicare. Man, I've heard about this, but it's available. And it's called Medicare Part G. Okay. Mm-hmm. You, you know okay, you're a sick senior citizen, and the government says there's no nursing home care available for you. So what do you do? Call me. Our plan gives anyone 65 years or older a gun and four bullets. What? And you're allowed to shoot. You're allowed to shoot four politicians. Oh. Okay. Of course, this means you'll be sent to prison, but there you're going to receive three meals a day, a roof over your head, central heating and air conditioning, and all the health care you need. That is true. Need new teeth? No problem. Need glasses? That's great. Need a new hip, knees, kidney, lungs, or heart? They're all covered. All right? As an added bonus, your kids can come and visit you as often as they like now. And who will be paying for all of this? The same government that just told you you can't afford to uh, go into a home. And you can get rid of your four useless politicians while you're at it. (laughs) So there's your Medicare for all. Plus, because you're a prisoner, because you're a prisoner, you don't have to pay any income taxes. What a great country this is, or what, huh? And 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 you're complaining that we're not up with Sweden. Yeah. Yeah. We should have free health care. If they're getting it and they broke the law. Tony, we we should have free health care. You should pay for it. With all of that money you're earning, uh, beating up your mother... And, and you should pay for the health care. Uh, well, I don't want to get into this, Phil, but we're already paying a lot of money for no health care. Okay? So, you know, it, it costs yeah, I mean, a lot of money. But anyway, um, um, so where was I? Oh, yeah, Sibby is there. Hi, Sibby. Uh, we always like it when he drops by on the program. It, it allows us to have two conservatives, well, a real conservative and a phony one. Uh, on our panel. Are you calling oh, and then, a phony? And then, and, then, and, then, and then it's a Republican. And then there's Patrick. There's Patrick is a Republican. This is interesting. We actually have seven people here, eight people with me, seven of the three of which are to the right. So we, we are rather, I think, we're pretty good at this. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing, nothing wrong with it. Uh, by the way, I, uh, I I mentioned this earlier. I was supposed to, I I was told by my doctor. He said we should be getting the results back from your biopsy on Friday, Ooh. and I didn't hear from him. So I guess he didn't get any results yet. You know, he's still laughing. Yeah, he will. He's yeah. <laughs> I stuck a scope at that guy's ass, and I didn't <laughs> even take. I didn't. didn't e- I didn't even do anything. I didn't even send the. I got four K from Medicare. Yeah, yeah. He didn't even get a reach around. Yeah, yeah. right. Exactly. So, you know, it. Uh, uh, I but I it bothered me because I was sitting around waiting for the call today, you know, to find out how it turned out, and uh, but uh, sometimes these biopsies take a couple more days, you know, than they expect. So. Um, they may, may have had a lot of biopsies at the lab this week, and so yeah, whatever. So. His office was active. Hmm? 
Oh, how long did it take? How long did it take you guys to get yours back? Uh, it took about two weeks for mine. Really? Wow. I, I don't remember. Why did it take two weeks, uh, Vernon? I guess. I think they had to send it to a lab in Atlanta or something. Oh, okay. okay. All right. You know. No, everything goes through Atlanta. Yeah. Well, anyway, so he he said he'd have some results today, but I didn't hear from him, so I assume he didn't get any results. Or if so he's he, gonna. You're going to be punished over the weekend? Well, you know, what the hell? Uh, it's it, He says it's not going to kill me, okay? So... Um, wait till you get the bill. Wait, well, I don't I don't pay the bill. <laughs> That'll kill you. No, Medicare pays the bill, and then my secondary pays the bill. I was so happy the other day, I, I the dentist. I went to get this f tooth refilled, and mm. I figured originally when they filled it, it was 400 bucks. They, I go to my dentist, and they have to do what the insurance company says they have to do. It cost me $157. Pretty good. I, I, I felt great about that. Imagine, I felt great about spending $157 on a tooth. <laughs> you know. So, uh, yeah. uh, Sibby, where are you from originally, Sibby? India. India. Uh, and how long have you been here? Um, 18 years. 18 years. Okay. Um, uh, what made you decide to come here? I mean, there are a lot of other places, I'm sure, if you're from yeah. India. I was working in the Middle East for a few years, then I moved here. My sister was already here. Uh -huh. And uh, and that's why you decided to come here. Yeah. Yeah. Be just me and her, so, you know. Yeah. Rather be with my sibling than in the desert by myself. Now, so. w politically, you say you're you're conservative, Okay. Yes. Uh, were you that when you were in India, or is that uh, a a thing you kind of came to while you were here? When I came here, yeah. and when I came here, this is what happened. When I came here, I had a very thick British accent, and you know, people wouldn't, you know, they couldn't understand what I was saying. So what I did was I started listening to talk radio. Mm -hmm. Because I could listen, you know, all the time because it would play in the background. It, I would right. listen all the time. And most of the time, it's conservative talk radios. So when I listen to all their talking points and everything, then I feel, yeah, this is where, this is what I like. This is where I my mindset is. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a time, you know, the, the whole Iraq, uh, the you know, the Iraq war was coming and, and stuff like that. Yeah. And where all the blowhards from the right were all over, you know, in New York, you have the 77 WOR, all of those mm -hmm. uh, channels, mm -hmm. those radio stations. So I would listen to them hours on end every day. And, uh, you know, then I realized that this is what I want to, you know, this is the political way of thinking that I always had. And now I found an avenue to channel it. So. I joined the, you know, the Republican, uh, you know, the little group that we have here on Long Island. And, you know, I was campaigning. And you all know, that. it's kind of interesting, though. I'm wondering if people who come here from another country. Yeah. Uh, have more of a tendency to become conservative. Yes. Uh, the Cubans. The, 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 no, but I mean, well, look yeah. at the Cubans that come here. Yeah. They're, they're, they're almost, you know, really heavy right wingers. You know. I think it is basically because of what conservatives say. And not what they do, you know. Yeah. They would, they are like a lot like preachers, you know. They would say they, they are like you know. You do what I'm trying to tell you to do, but don't do what I do. Yeah. You know that's what I think. This is what it is. People get you know caught caught up with that whole thing. The notion of the conservative people are, you know, they are the the family value or traditionally you know the the religious type or you know people who care about yeah. other people and stuff like that. But I have seen that over the years, liberals are the one more you know. They call it the bleeding heart liberal. I think liberals have more tendency to care for other human beings, and care for the right of law, a right of a person's independence, and you know freedom and stuff like that. Conservatives talk about it, but they never put in practice. Yeah. So I think you know over time, people realize it. That's why I think you know people when they come in here, they want to be conservatives. But when they live with conservatives and see what they do, as opposed to but what me, they but say, this, this is what kind of is interesting, like, Sibby, is that I don't understand, is that you say that you are a conservative, and yet you then say the conservatives don't live up to their ideals. Yes. So I'm a conservative in my belief, and I try to act like a conservative, not like the phonies who just, you know, want power. 
Yeah. Anybody who is in power, let's you know cajole up to him and just suck up to him, like, and it, it doesn't matter it, what it, he in does. In all deference to Phil, I don't consider Phil a conservative. Uh, I'm closer to a libertarian. I think I think Phil talks a lot like conservatives, are, but I think he does more you know liberal stuff like the the stuff that you are used to doing. That's why you are good friends with him. Mm -hmm. That's what I think. I don't know about you know your past, but you know over the years I've you know. Yeah. When I was friendly with Alex, we never talked about anything, no sports, no nothing. We just did stuff, went to movies and, you know, uh, there was no political stuff. It was, well, it was, I was a different uh, time. Yeah, I was. Well, I, I guess I was pretty political back in the day. Hello, Charlie Wallace. He's just joined us, ladies and Hi. gentlemen. There he is. Uh, let's see. Right over there. OK. Full right. screen. There. Huh? Not a, not a full house, but a full screen. But a full screen. Not a full... Well, I, I could go to my other screen, and then it isn't a full screen, but... Yeah. Know, soon. Yeah. Soon. Full house. Yeah. Um, somebody else called. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, we yeah, have one more. Yeah, somebody else called. You'll have to. Yeah, let's see here. So we have eight there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Eight plus you is nine. Eight plus me is nine. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice little little group here. Yeah, it's the Brady Bunch look. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I, uh, I am just. I, my problem is right now is that I'm I'm very much a, a lefty, uh, but I I do not like MSNBC. It is just starting to irritate the fucking yeah. shit out of me. You That's know? the liberal Fox News. That's what it is. It's the liberal Fox News, exactly. I mean, if I were a conservative, I wouldn't like Fox News. Yes, Phil. Uh, you know, I was thinking uh, ab about my political bent and that, you know, in the late oh, 60s. Oh, it's definitely bent. Okay, no, go ahead. No. In, in the late 60s, I was very anti-government uh, I, and I was anti-Vietnam War. Uh, and and I believed I didn't trust the government and I don't trust the government now. There, There's what, uh, you know, I, I was hanging out at WBAI. I, 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 there was, it wasn't that I supported uh, liberals or, or uh, actually I ended up liking Republicans because they stopped mm -hmm. the war in Vietnam. Uh, whether you like the way they did it or not, yeah. uh, it, it was going on uh, from uh, Johnson increased it. He increased the bombing. Uh, mm -hmm. And it was Nixon that ended the war. Whether you like it or not, he, that's what happened. So I started to tend to be more of a conservative, more of a Republican because of the ending of the war. Well, and you, you got to uh, realize, though, that Nixon— And individual values. Nixon, when the day he took office as president— <clears throat> said he had, a, he had a plan. No, he said he had a plan. He had one on his desk— said it was secret. And it was the same exact plan he finally adopted yeah. a, a yeah. seven, a seven to six years yeah. later. Uh, but after a lot of people had died as a result, you know, so I don't and consider honor. He could have ended that thing at any time in the way that he ended it, but he didn't. He waited were, too long to do there it. There were too many people making money off of that war. Uh, and and that's why it didn't end. You, you don't. War is very good for an economy. Yes. yes. And so um, uh, so my you know I I lean Republican because of of that and and, uh, and a few other things. I mean the uh, the EPA was instituted by Nixon. The um, the fifty five mile an hour speed limit was instituted by Nixon. There, uh, and all of these things were Republican okay. uh, all right. uh, yeah. uh, table. Yeah. So uh, that's yeah. why I go to that direction. And I always believe that if you cripple people by doing stuff for them, that they should be able to do on their own. Okay. And if you just uh, give people right. stuff, you, you, you hurt them. Yeah, okay, fine. Uh, uh, let me let me let me ask uh, uh, Kevin, for instance. Kevin, why are you uh, why why are you to the left? I'm actually in the middle. You're in the middle. Yeah, I'm an independent. Really? In other words, you don't go left or right, or are you right on some issues no, and I left on others? No, I drift either way. It okay. depends. So where 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 what kind of issues are you to the left on, and what kind of issues are you to the right on? Well, I drift more to the left right now because of all the crap yes. with what's going on, you know, up in the White House now. But, you know, it, it's it's hard to go, 
you know, there's there's certain there's probably one or two things that I I don't necessarily disagree with Trump on, but it's very few things. I mean, but uh, there's a lot of things that I don't agree with with the Democrats too. Well, yeah. You know, I I you know like they eat their own. I don't. There's a lot of things that they're they're doing that I think they're they're right now they could be they could be killing themselves right now well you know why we eat our own is because we're yummy yeah <laughs> little chocolate sauce <laughs> you know and, and and that goes back it goes back to the nixon times with me because back then he made me not vote mm-hmm. at all mm-hmm. he had me back where you know when that was going on i was saying fuck this i don't want even want to deal with politicians because yeah. of the shit that was going on then yeah yeah, and it's really funny because I was thinking the other day. My daughter is now right in the same era, like in uh, she's freshman in high school, so it's a couple of day, a couple of years behind. I was in uh, probably sophomore, junior in high school when Nixon was getting impeached. Yeah, so it's kind of it's kind of going full circle here, and she's seeing all the stuff that I saw. Well, let me let me going ask, on with Trump. Let me ask you all this question. You know, I have maintained for the longest time that the problem with America is, is that we came back from World War II with an attitude that we did the right thing and that we saved the world. Okay, yeah. basically, women. Let me finish, Phil. Uh, and and uh, you could say yes, we did, but talk to the Russians, and the Russians will tell you. They had a lot more people that died uh, on their from in their country, and that they in fact uh, died because the United States didn't come to the table. But be that as it may, we came back from there feeling pretty good about ourselves, and quite frankly, we we had every reason to. Okay, since then we haven't had a war that was right since. Korean War wasn't a just war. Vietnam wasn't a just war. I mean, what war have we fought in the last, uh, uh, since World War II, where we were the good guys? Uh, war of 1812. No, no, I said since. <laughs> I know. I, since. <laughs> I know, I know he said since. But uh, we've, uh, been, we've been the world police. We're always getting into everybody else's shit. Yeah, yeah. And telling them what they should do. Yeah, exactly. And for money. And this is all about and oil. money. Just money, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, uh, so, I mean. Vernon's uh, got his hand up. Yes, Vernon. I, I, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, yes, Vernon. Uh, fun fact. <laughs> when uh, Phil is giving Nixon all of these kudos about the EPA and these other things that uh, happened during Nixon's reign, guess who was in control of Congress? Democrats. So none of that shit would have happened without Democrats. It wasn't the same way then. There wasn't that infighting. They actually worked together. Uh, yeah, you know. but the majorities were Democrats. Uh, yeah, the but it's, it's not like majority. it is today. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, but I agree. There was more bipartisanship back then. But, you know, you can't give Richard Nixon all these kudos without saying that the Democrats had something to do with it as well. Oh, I forgot to, to laud the Democrats. They were so nice to let Nixon do those things. Yeah, okay. See, that shit well, let right Nixon there. Let Nixon do anything. <laughs> That's it they right there. Let Nixon That's do it. anything. Nixon couldn't do shit until they passed a law that he could sign. Yeah, exactly. but they passed laws, and he did yeah. sign. Well, you, yeah. it, this was also a time when there was cooperation between the two parties. We've lost that. We've completely yeah, even the lost O'Neill that. Reagan it, stuff. Yeah, because it's been in control. What we, we say that again, uh, uh, Charlie? Is it, we lost that, that bipartisanship and that working together because Republicans have been in control. It's only when Democrats are in control that we suddenly can work together. They were in control for 50 years. What do you mean? Yeah, the, we what do you mean the Democrats? What do you mean the, all the good stuff that happened? Okay. What do you mean the Democrats were in control civil for rights? fifty years? Oh, civil rights yeah. happened yeah. under Democrats. Yeah, the the Congress was uh, was democratic. Uh, what was it from uh, forty from the forties to to the um, to the seventies? It was uh, once yeah, Phil, uh, Phil, uh, Phil. Uh, that was fifty fucking well, years ago. It was the nineties before. It was fifty. It was fifty no, years no, ago. What was Phil? the guy that Alex doesn't like that is a pundit the now Newt on Gingrich. Fox News? Uh, Newt oh. Gingrich. That's that's when they won the Congress. 
So it wasn't until Newt Gingrich that uh, yeah, there was a still, Republican Congress. How many Congress. years ago was that, Phil? Yeah, but for 50 years before that, it was well, a Democrat. So 50 Democrat. years before that, it was Democrats. All right, fine. It was also a time when we got Medicare and we and got Social Security and we got a lot yeah, of the, things. The Democrats listen to the, the minority uh, and the Republicans don't. No, it, it, it has nothing to do with that. Right now, it's all about power. And uh, right now, uh, there's there's a conspiracy to uh, to make no, sure that there's no, never no. another Phil, Republican Phil, it in the has White no, House it has, or the Congress. It has nothing to do with power. It has nothing to do with power. It has to do with self-preservation. And you have nothing but a bunch of politicians who simply live for only one thing, to get reelected. That's right. You know, they're not there because they're going to do the right thing. Mr. Smith does not go to Washington and stand there with a bunch of letters and, and pass out, you know, on the pile of letters. No, and none of that. Guess what's the, only way, wait, wait guess what's the only way to get rid of that? The only way to get rid of that is public term. financing of elections. Term public limits. Public financing of elections. Term limits. Term limits just puts the bureaucrats in charge and puts yeah. more more power in the lobbyists. Uh, no, that's the problem. The bureaucrats. No, want I, agree, I agree. I agree. I agree. No, 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 no. Term limits. You bring somebody in who doesn't know his butt from first base. OK. Yeah. For the first for the first year, they are very dependent upon their staff, the staff who's been there for a long time and they know how to get shit done. Well, that's that's why Trump is doing it a different way. And the bureaucrats want to do it. And their it's way. working so well, isn't yeah. it, Phil? Yeah, it will. <laughs> Five more years. Five more Memorial years. Memorial awards of uh, what was that Alaskan senator whose name I forget now, the woman. Uh, 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 yeah, um, she was Hall the governor. Yeah. Uh, and, and ran Hall for vice what president. We, what were we saying, Sibby? Sarah Palin. Uh, Sarah Palin, oh, Sarah yeah. Palin. Uh, How's yeah. that going? Yeah. Uh, yeah. How's that going for you, Phil? Yeah. Anyway, Very good. Uh, Sarah's yeah. going to run yeah, yeah, uh, as yeah. a Democrat. Uh, uh, Patrick's got his hand up. Patrick. I don't need the best people. Patrick. I don't need the best people. I'll always remember that that line. I'll hire the best people. Yeah, I know yeah. the best people. Okay, Patrick. Patrick. <laughs> All right. So, if the limits are so bad, mm. why do we have them for the presidency? Why do we have them for the governorships? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, like the governor here in Wisconsin, it's a uh, I think it's three three terms. President at two terms. Uh, you know, different states have different term limits for their governors. But mm -hmm. you know, in every one of those, that first year is typically a learning time for anyone. So wh <clears throat> why is that so awful for other? I mean, you know, I would rather see senators run for two or three terms. I mean, Christ, that's 18 years right there. They mm -hmm. run for six-year terms. That's enough. They don't need to be in there for 30, 40 years. And for Congress people, it's a two-year term. So let's say we we give them eight terms so that they can be on there for 16 years or equal what it would be for a senator. And that, I mean, goddamn, we don't need those fucking people in there forever. And that's it's not supposed to be a job. It's well, supposed it's to, it's supposed to, it's and, supposed to know, be giving to public service. Well, yeah. and you know, I mean, you know, the presidency. Then let's get rid of the term limits for the president because everybody loved Obama. You know, let him be the dictator. Everybody is so afraid that Trump's going to be a dictator. Um, you know, I mean, that's why we have term limits for officers, and it should be extended to the Senate and the Congress. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. How, how many people? How many people here feel that uh, Trump is really only working in his own self-interest? Hmm. <laughs> Phil, come on. <laughs> Phil, you know that, right? I, I don't think he's working his own self-interest. He's not? Oh, come on. No, I don't think so. Come on. Yeah, well, yes, Jeff. That's fine. Jeff? Uh, I, I think Trump is obviously so interested in himself and, and maybe his wife and maybe his daughter. And that's about it. I, I think that uh, that we have a president that runs this country primarily on ego, you know, and that uh, if his ego gets bruised, oh boy, mm -hmm. low, b b 
and behold, the person who he is, you know, you just, it, when you're in politics and people say things about you, you can't be thin-skinned about it because it's going to go on every day of the week, and he's thin-skinned. And, yeah. and then he operates and he reacts with a knee-jerk reaction with that thin skin, and it's, sca it's scary. It's just scary. Yes, Jeff. But wouldn't you say Nixon had that same issue? Uh, to a lesser extent. Yes, uh, obviously. Uh, his issues were that he could uh, uh, snatch defeat from the hands of victory. Yeah. Uh, he was famous for that. Uh, he was When he was graduating from Whittier College, he was going to graduate at the top of his class, and the night before they were going to reveal, you know, who, who had the highest standings in classes, he broke in to the offices to see how he would wind up, and he got caught, and they almost didn't let him graduate, okay? Now, it, it cut to Watergate. It's yeah. this, it was the same thing. There was yeah. no reason for him to have people break into Watergate because he was going to win that fucking election. Did did he order those people to do it, or was he just yes. being loyal and, and yes. protecting no. the people no. that got caught? Why after? would he be loyal to those people if yeah. they broke in somewhere unless he asked them to do it? Uh, maybe because that's the kind of guy he was. Yeah, no, that's the kind of guy he was. He he couldn't. He, he would, you know, a stand up guy. There was no difference between going he had very in. Very low self esteem. Yeah, Nixon had very low self esteem. Yes, that was his problem. Yeah. Uh, you know. Uh, I, yes, uh, Jeff. Well, I, I don't. I don't often tell anybody this, but toward the end of Vietnam, one of the reasons that that the war ended, mm -hmm. and Nixon could have done it a lot sooner, was most of the money was coming to North Vietnam from Russia, and and it came in on ships. Well, a bunch of engineers figured out how to take a big airplane and load it up with stuff and ship it into North Vietnam in their rivers and their lakes. And therefore, the Russians didn't want to lose all of their uh, equipment. Mm -hmm. That's what ended the war. Hmm. It's a technical issue. And Nixon would have never made that. Yeah. Well, I mean, Nixon, uh, the terms under which we left Vietnam were the exact terms that were sitting on the table when he took yeah, of office course. in the beginning. And so that war went on much longer than that? it had Six to. Years? And that was because he didn't Six, do it. Yeah. He didn't do anything about it. You yeah. know, um, I mean, that was just the most horrible war we've ever been involved in. I mean, uh, you know, and the reason you were against it, Phil, is you were of draft age. Yeah. It, it, yes, I was. Yeah, you were self-serving. I also, I also yeah. didn't believe that it was a just war. Well, no, you and didn't I, believe it was a just war because your ass was on the line, Phil. Not necessarily. I, I could have, uh, you know, gotten, uh, well, my grades wouldn't have gotten me much but uh you know i, I could have volunteered and were uh, i mean the only reason why i wasn't uh, why i why i missed the uh, draft was simply because i went into the navy and i spent two years as part of the navy reserve and uh so i was exempt from the draft you know but i i did it by you know it's the old joke about join the navy and watch the army at work I had bone spurs. <laughs> yeah, Foot bones. spurs. Uh, yes, uh, uh, Patrick. I, I hate to break this, but this last Civil War was the worst war. I mean, just the Battle of Gettysburg. Oh, yeah, oh, no. You're absolutely right. 58,000 casualties, and there's 58,000 names on the wall for Vietnam. Well, now, let, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me argue with you a little bit on that, okay? Yes, there were more deaths in the Civil War, and then there were more deaths, there were a lot less deaths in World War II, and then there were a lot less deaths in Vietnam. But the reason was is because of, of medicine and the fact that, let me finish, Phil, 
that we, we could triage people. And as each war came along, our ability to save the lives of people who were hurt. In those days, in the Civil War, you got hit by a bullet, you died of gangrene, and that was it. Sepsis. In yeah. sepsis and so uh, on. You know? uh, so that's there was one of another the thing why. about the Vietnam War. It was televised. And uh, it, was, it was, you know, within hours... You saw what was going on. It was, there was kind of televised. Count. It was slow television. Slow, yeah, you know, within hours. No, uh, you, within you, days. Okay. And uh, you had uh, every night it was, you know, it was this many soldiers, uh, you know, were, were killed. This, you know, mm -hmm. uh, it was no other war. Uh, got that kind of attention. If, if, we had, if we had Iran, the kind, if, we, if we had the kind of medicine during the Vietnam War that we had during World War II, we were limited to that medicine. You would have seen the casualties four times as much as they were yeah. in Vietnam. That's yeah. true. Now the casualties that we're seeing from Afghanistan and 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 uh, Iraq uh, are are also devastating because they're. Things that we had never anticipated before, uh, you know, the IED, like the fact that people would shoot back. <laughs> uh, no, and and well, no, they, 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 there was diseases in the desert. Desert that uh, yeah, you know these these guys were getting stuff. That, well, let, uh, let, uh, let uh, uh, Charlie was saying something. What were you saying, Charlie? I'm just saying what you're saying is true. The, 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 if we if we had the medicine. The, the uh, medical abilities like we have now, you'd have far fewer deaths in Vietnam and far fewer deaths in World War II. It's just that absolutely, and so we're the saving people yeah. that would never have survived, yeah, back in Vietnam or World War II. And the Civil War was devastating because I mean, as I say, you get hit, 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 shot by a bullet. Yeah, they can retrieve the bullet out of you, but your grand gangrene might set in and you'll die anyway. I mean, we had more people. If, if I remember after World War II, mm -hmm. as a kid, people coming home without limbs, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, now, they come home today without limbs, but not in the numbers that they once did. Oh, because no. no. wait a minute, because we're able to triage them better, Okay. They yes, they do come back missing limbs, Phil. I know that, and you know your your Stephen Stills or whatever that thing is. Uh, <laughs> Still Stephen Stiller. The Stephen Foundation. Stephen Stiller's foundation. You know, I know all that, but still, if if this were uh, 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 after World War II, you saw many more people missing limbs and so on. They were just coming back into the society uh, because we did not have the triage. Uh, we could not get people fast enough to a hospital, so we had to cut their legs off on the you know, on the battlefield. Yes, uh, Patrick, and then Jeff. Well, Jeff put his hand up. Jeff okay, before. okay, Jeff. Okay, well, my, my grandfather worked uh, in World War II in the uh, Brooklyn Navy Yard, mm -hmm. and uh, he was a carpenter. And he's an older guy, and he actually somehow cut his leg, and he died. Because of that. Gangrene? Oh. Gangrene? Yeah, yeah gangrene. They had, they had no medications. Oh, it didn't, so, you know, <laughs> it, 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 we were barely into uh, antibiotics, I think, at the time. I think at the beginning of World War II, we didn't even have antibiotics. We didn't have them. And, and asbestos, as, asbestos, you know, they were wrapping the pipes with uh, that in the shipyard. And these guys were uh, smoking four packs of Chesterfields and, 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 yeah, and but, immersed. Yeah, but, we're, but we're, ta we're talking about the war now, Phil. I mean, well, it was it, the war it, effort when they were building the ships. I forget the about the war effort. I'm talking about guys who are getting shot at and getting bullets in them. He's yeah. got him smoking so chest of his. Yeah, what were you saying? Going to say, Patrick? I was going to say something. You're right as far as the medical stuff, but the difference is the Civil War mm -hmm. was fought similarly to how the Revolution and the other wars were, where they were just walking into meat grinders. Yep. There was no guerrilla warfare yet. It was literally. You're standing in lines and walking, and like with Gettysburg, you know, Pickett and Lee, the, the Confederacy, they were walking across a couple of miles of a field at a disadvantage because the Union had the high ground. So, you know, medicine does play into that, but when you're walking into oh, a field no, it, fire, it, right. and it, we never had that in Vietnam. I mean, there were battles that probably were similar 
but you know, I mean. Well, let me give you an example. There was a there's a silent film called The Big Parade. It was made about World War One. And uh, mm -hmm. one of the major scenes in it, which is just chilling, is that all these soldiers are marching and they're being picked off one by one mm -hmm. by, by snipers, you know, who are shooting at them. That's the way we ran wars, you know. Uh, I mean, you go back to, the, uh, to when America was first formed in the, the French and Indian Wars or whatever, and the Indians... The Indians, the way they fought is they hid behind trees and they fired arrows at you. Meanwhile, well, the British soldiers just walked in a, in, a, in a line and the people in the front got killed and then the people in back of them got killed and so on. You hoped that you were on the very rear of this group of people, you know. There, there was also uh, the wars that were fought. People wore uniforms. You could identify who, who was the combatant. Yeah, bright red wasn't. is a really good idea. Yeah, well, you know. but uh, what what the situation is now, you know, Afghanistan and Iraq and even Vietnam, you didn't you didn't really know who the enemy was. Uh, they blended into the community, all and then well, they strike all, also, out. Also, also the science is different today. I mean, we have you know we have drones that can go in and wipe out enemies and so on, without us having to put our people right in the way of uh, be part of the cannon fodder. Uh, or become cannon fodder. So you, you know, uh, it was. Uh, it, it it's just that it, it it has changed a lot, and so we see the numbers go down. I mean, we look at the numbers of people who got killed, say, in the uh, Iraq War, and it's so minor in comparison to the wars before it. And as you go back in wars, the 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 death tolls get larger and larger, and then you get to the Civil War. You can't believe how many people died in the Civil War. I mean, you see Vernon? Hmm? Vernon. Vernon. I, I have a hard time because everybody's so small now. I, I know. That's why I'm... Yeah, you know. Vernon. One of, the, one of the things I found amazing about Gettysburg, and I took the family up there and we toured the battlefield, mm -hmm. is that all of those casualties occurred in three days. The battle only lasted three days, and there was only one civilian casualty mm -hmm. during the Battle of Gettysburg. Only one. All the rest of them were combatants. Wow. How many people died in Gettysburg? 58,000. Wow. And that's why I said the Vietnam War had 58,000 mm -hmm. names from the entire 15 years or yeah. whatever the official thing is. That That's why when I hear people talk about wars, I, it's incomprehensible until you look at just specifically Gettysburg. When you've got 58,000 casualties from uh, alive three days, second three and days. That I mean, it, it's amazing, and just that's why I had to bring that up because it batted Vietnam War, World War One, World War Two, at least at that point. We weren't doing the meat grinder walks anymore. I mean, World War One, you had trench warfare. You did have some of the walking, but it was changing. And World War Two was a totally different strategy. Right. Does anybody know how many people died in Hiroshima and There's Nagasaki? One hundred forty thousand in Hiroshima. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I, also, somebody, Matt, Cra Matt Crash mentions here that Antietam was the worst, most brutal day of the Civil War. Uh, I don't know how many days. You know Where was that? Yes, Tony. You know what I just did since you mentioned Vietnam? I just did a Google search, and they actually have the wall of faces where they show everybody that's on the wall, like pictures of them, and you can go over the faces of the people. I wonder if you guys know anybody who died in Vietnam. Does anybody? You can actually see when they were born when you go over it. It's in alphabetical order. I'm, I'm anybody, sure I did, but I, I Does anybody remember. here know anybody who died in Vietnam? Because you can just type I, it I, in. It's, I'm it's, sure I did. I, I, I remember there was local kids that died, you know, that I knew. Wow, Alex, they died young. I'm looking at just... Oh, no, most yeah, of them of were a year or two see, older. See, here's, my, here's, yeah, my, here's 20, my theory about ago. war. Uh, hmm? Uh, here's my theory about war. I think that if we hold a war, we should send all the old people first. 20 years old. Because wow. it's kind of yeah, like... People 79 it, well, and no, up. No, wait a minute. Here's the reason why. Here's the reason why. <laughs> Number, there are a couple of reasons why. Number one, 
if you have a refrigerator and you have milk, you use the old milk first, the oldest milk first, and then you get to the newer milk later, okay? The, the other reason would be is if you sent nothing, but if you started with the oldest people first to go to war, there wouldn't be any wars. Too many young people dying, Alex. you got to see their faces. Yeah. They're like babies. I know. I mean, work. It's sad. Yeah. 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 No. And, and and those that survived came back with such mental problems as a result yeah, of heroin it. addicts. They, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's just just terrible. Just terrible. So I'll look at know. my name, Magno. I'll see if there's anybody. Uh, yeah. yeah if, if there's anybody named Magno there. Yeah, you know, I can see that at search. You never know. Yeah. yeah. My whole family. See if you can find somebody named Schwarzman. I don't think so. Oh, I've actually uh, can't there's only one. Magno. Huh? <laughs> Uh, I found a Magno. Did you find a Magno? Really? It's Campos Magno. Campo, Campos Magno? Army. He died, date of birth, 1933. Uh-huh. And he was a casualty. 33 cas would have been too young for Vietnam. What? I mean, too old for Vietnam. He was a casualty in 19, November 8th, 1965. Branch of Service Army. Really? Yeah. yeah, he could have been. He could have been in the military for quite a while. Was, yeah, that's true. By, yeah. The, by the time that happened, it was thirty-three, and then when was Vietnam? What year was Vietnam? Uh, and he died in sixty-five. Sixty-five. So that's easy. It'd only be uh, th uh, uh, th what thirty-six, thirty-seven years old. That, that, yeah. He was one of those military advisors. Yeah. He, yes, they were all military. Those were in advisors. fifty-nine. You know, sixty. Yeah. Um, and Sibby, I guess none of this means a lot to you because you were no. in India at the time, right? Yeah, How about Uncle Tanus? Well, well, you stop with the Uncle Tanus. <laughs> it's sad. I got to get off this page. I'm, I'm getting emotional here. Well, Too many okay. people young, Alex. Yeah, oh, no, it's just, all young. It's mostly young people. That's yeah. the problem. And with they, some of these kids, like, as they say, if you forced old people to go to war and then got to the young people, you'd find there wouldn't be very many wars because it's the old people that send the young people off to wars. Yes. Right, Kevin? He looks like he's 17. Right? Yep. Maybe yep. 17. Yeah. You know, just wanted to bring you into the conversation, Kevin. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> I know you are. So uh, Kevin's too young for Vietnam. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm not. I well, just missed the draft like you did. I missed it in 72. Yeah, yeah and I just missed it in, what, 73 or 4. With, it, the end, it actually, the, the provincial draft ended in 74, didn't it? No, seven, uh, it went to an all-volunteer army the week that I was, my lottery number came up. So my, the, my lottery in June, the third week of June, 1972, was uh, the lottery that I was in. I was number 64, which meant I was going. And uh, that lottery didn't count, even though it was published. And there was no other lotteries after that. And damn it, it's but the only lottery it you ever 74. won. The war went to 74, but the lottery uh, was over. Uh, and the draft some sort of was draft because it was, a, it was an all-volunteer army. Well, the Vietnam yeah. War started when I uh, when I was being mustered out of the Gulf of Tonkin incident happened shortly before that. I think when I was getting mustered out, I was mustered out with some people who were on the USS Maddox and the Sea Turner Joy. So, but that was kind of the real beginning of it, full bore. But anyway, hey, listen, there's our theme song. Gee, so nice of you guys to come by tonight. And uh, 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 Sibby, good having you here. Uh, Phil, terrific having you here. Uh, Thank you. Uh, here, here we go. A little Morse code, please, from Vernon. <laughs> and uh, pa Patrick, don't look at those people. It's going to make you depressed. Um, <laughs> Patrick Blazik, thank you so much. Uh, Tony, I meant. Tony. Patrick. Thank you so much for your participation this evening. It's always welcomed. Uh, uh, Kevin, good to see you. Jeff, good to see you. Charlie, good to see you too. Hey, listen, I think all of you should give a, a big wave goodbye, and then I will wave back at you. See? Okay, there they go, folks. That's our citizen panel for tonight. That's our citizen panel for the week. Uh, and uh, we uh, thank all of them for having joined us this evening. Uh, and uh, we will hopefully see them again next week. We're only going to do two days next week because it is Thanksgiving after all, and we have to celebrate a happy Turkey Day. 
I'm Alex Bennett. I'll be back on Tuesday. There's no uh, no uh, Damien, uh, but I will be here at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. See you later.